Hello and welcome everyone to this, our first episode of the Beacons of Kelestri, uh, the first and currently only Ether TTRPG actual play. That means that this is a playtest, and so a couple of things before, you know, getting into introductions and stuff. Expect some jank, expect changes to be made over time. That is the nature of a playtest. Things will shift around. I do hope you'll show us some mercy as a result. Uh, that said, I am Eldritch Crow, um, the creator of Ether, and uh, the person who is very flattered that you are all here, including my players. Um, so let's just take a minute and uh, introduce y'all, starting with one. Actually, I don't have the order up. Uh, there it is. It's me. Hey y'all, I am Monroe. My pronouns are he, him, and they, them interchangeably, and I am so excited to be here for my first, like, actual casted stream. Thank you, a wonderful Nins. Hello, I am Ninbins. He, him. Uh, you can catch me on at Ninbins on Twitter. I may be announcing things there. Who knows? Uh, next up is one Rainy. Hi, hello. Um, I am Rainy. Rainy Keys here on Twitch and uh, at Rain Keys on Twitter. Uh, I scream into very both types of voids, and occasionally I do art and game streams over on Twitch. But it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. And Sin. Hi. Um, I'm Sin. My pronouns are. He, him. You can find me here on Twitch, surprisingly, on days that are not today. But you can also find me on Twitter at Zenziac Beta if you want to hear me talk about tabletop things and most recently, why the Sith make me sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, as mentioned, I'm Eldritch Crow. Um, I forgot to mention my pronouns are he, him. Now, We'll get to character introductions in a moment, but first I do want to say um, mild content warning for anyone who feels like they can't handle like vague implied zombie imagery. Um, it's not exact, but the mood will be there and there will be some uh, actiony uh, elements, also possibly some mild violence in the beginning of this. So if you need to dodge those vibes, come back in about 20 minutes to a half hour, hopefully. Um, I'm mean, here for the violence. It's fine. That, that's yeah, we're here for fair. the violence. We woke up and, and chose violence. <laughs> we did wake As up and I, choose violence. I, so. I feel bad because I forgot my pronouns. <laughs> uh, she, her. Uh, that's okay. All the pronouns can be seen on the overlay. Because I actually thought that through. Um, but yeah, let's just get some sound effects rolling here. So, as most stories do, ours begins in the small, idyllic village of Twin Creeks Crossing, a town built up around an outpost created by the Gleam Wardens, who dedicate themselves to protecting settlements, finding survivors of a cataclysm, and discovering new pieces of the former Broil Crest to turn into magical beacons. Twin Creeks is one such town of only a few hundred people built up around a Gleam Warden outpost, surrounded with wetlands and rice paddies, with a large beacon at its center, created to hopefully allow the town to expand. It's mid-afternoon, and you all have been in town for a few days after returning as a part of the Gleam Warden's latest expeditionary force. You're about three days out from the plateau, where you'll be returning home to. Normally, the day would be filled with a slight glow of the beacon's light in the air, sounds of running water, people in the market square, the sense of cooking food, and fresh harvested grain. Danica, mm -hmm. this is a short description of yourself and how you're keeping yourself occupied as the expeditionary force prepares to head back to the plateau. Okay, so Danica is a tall six foot some broad 
Oh, with long, curly, auburn hair. She usually keeps pinned back with these glass butterfly pins. Um, freckles all over her face. Floral tattoos on her chest and some on her arms and hands. And um, she would probably just be, currently, since she has no nothing to, no glasswork to do or nowhere to go, she's probably just sketching, just taking her time, taking in what's around her. Wonderful. And I imagine she uh, actually might be at the center of town, which is split by um, a slight bridge over one of the creeks and uh, possibly sketching those who are crossing the bridge to go to the various aspects of the market. This oh, for has, sure. People watching. This town perhaps only has about 200 people. It's not large by any means, but it is close to the plateau and it does provide quite a bit of food in the surrounding areas as well. That said, Barry, describe yourself and give us an idea of what you found in town that is absolutely fascinating and has perhaps drawn your attention for the day. Um, so at any given moment, Barry may choose to be tall or short. Uh, they sport, uh, he sports a charming piss helmet and a pair of wireframe glasses. Uh, he wears clothes mostly for the utilities, so um, something like cargo shorts and just a, a plain shirt. Um, and he's always carrying around a, a tool belt that is almost um, over full with tools. Um, and as for what he has bound to interest himself with. He's currently helping um, one of the local farmers uproot some of their um, orchards. Lovely. Um, in hopes to replant them elsewhere. Perhaps closer to town so that they might be a bit more protected by access. the beacon. Both. Wonderful. And I would imagine, uh, being one of the plant folk Navanayads, you're almost having a time of less uprooting these orchards and more coaxing them. Just, just a bit of convincing, you know, to let up their roots and, and let us, um, place them in better soil. Plants are, um, sometimes very, very picky about where they're uh, meant to grow. That is very true. Now, we move a bit across town, perhaps just outside, back to the market square. And Alyssa, what are you doing to avoid people who are likely to ask some awkward questions about your particular appearance? if you wouldn't mind describing yourself as well. So, Alyssa Vesper is um, very interesting. Uh, she stands out I, quite clearly amongst the other Gleam Wardens, and for the fact is that she has bound her hair underneath a cloth cap, which, and has thrown <laughs> over like a, a sort of more sheer dark black veil over it. And portions of that veil, um, even darker, rests just slightly over her face, perhaps um, covering, like, nobody is sure how it's, like, stayed, but it just stays permanently. So ev the only thing, only glimpse of, like, skin that anybody can get is just her lower jaw, her mouth, and then a portion of her neck before the rest of her is just hidden under these multi- the- under these shades of black and slightly dark charcoal gray. Lovely. Now, Lissa, as you're going- She primarily just, like, yeah. Lissa, as you're going about your day, it is difficult for you not to notice 
an array of small children who whisper to each other and possibly point in your direction. And you're curious about it at first, and then you realize that, oh, you must resemble certain figures they read about in fairy tales with your mask and your veil. And then you immediately do your best to try and dodge them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and as you are in the process of dodging them, perhaps you are asked to help move a few items by the Gleam Wardens. Perhaps you're asked to help string a bow or two for the townsfolk. But other than that, we move outwards to the edge of town to perhaps one of the areas that hasn't quite been reached by Barry and his, uh, his group of orchard farmers attempting to move things around. Sin, would you be so kind as to introduce your character with a description? And tell me how he feels upon awakening just outside of town. Oh. Well, a new place, but I guess this isn't necessarily new. I kind of hope that person I dreamt about last night is here. Because I really don't feel like putting in effort today. I climb out of the tree, do a bit of stretching. I'm wearing like a whole like Hakama and Gata shoes. Um, I just put my my, my bow ends tucked away over here. I pulled the twig out of one of the out of the tree and stuck it in my mouth for the time being. I kind of try to get a sense of um, what my bearings are. You, you get the sense that you may have been in towns near this area before. Off in the distance, you see the vague walls and peaks of mountains and the hint of fog that denotes the shattered plateau. And you know you've been in the shadow of that plateau before, at least. Perhaps from a different angle, so you might be a bit farther west or a bit farther east than you were before. You don't quite know. You know, I hope this town has a better sense of fashion than the last one. Last time I walked into a town, they looked at me kind of funny for wearing all of this other stuff. Had a lot of comments on the fact that it's flowers, but none of them knew it was chamomile. With that statement in mind, do you begin to walk into town? I do. You get the same strange looks, as this is a town not known necessarily for fashion, mm. but known Dreadful. more for rice and cherries. And by extension, rice paper, but also most of them wear very plain clothes because this is a bit of a wetland. So anything particularly nice and beautiful is tend to kept towards more solid objects that might not take up dirt over time. Well, Th THC in chat says this town hopefully knows how to season food. <laughs> Uh, but just doesn't know how to spice up the outfits. Hopefully they're not seizing it with bullion. So, uh, <laughs> we are going to take, you know, take an observation. You know, these seem to be um, relatively simple, hardworking folk, and considering that's like kind of the type of people that I come from, I can appreciate that anywhere. Yes, indeed. I do... Um, 
try to figure I, I try to just eyeball what I can see for town and see if I can find any places that smoke would be coming from the roof because that usually indicates places that people make weapons or places that people make food. And you find a few places like that. There are two spouts, um, one on either side of the river. Now, <laughs> uh, as you're marching through town, Alyssa, you might see this strange figure pass by, but I doubt you would interact. Maybe just clock them. Now, if you mm. if you did see me, I can tell you that what you would see is they look like they're wearing relatively simple clothes, except that they have this long kind of flowing coat that's covered in white and yellow flowers, or at least has like hints of those here and there, mostly toward the outer edges. Um, mm -hmm. Aside from that, the entire coat is like sea foam green. Mm hmm which wait they also wear glasses and they have um wait i can't remember whether or not this character has hair so we'll figure it out <laughs> later it's i need fine. to take my pick crew on this we don't we don't have the official artwork it's fine not yet <laughs> everything is subject to change <laughs> it so is no. um I am certain that I am quite aware of this figure concerning some dreams I've had, but I do clock them, but I just keep quiet and go back to just stringing up the bow. And actually, uh, Alyssa will probably at this point in time in helping with the maintenance of the other bows for the Gleam Wardens and the farmers around town, she's going to pull off her own and, uh, you know, just... Uh, wax the string and all that. Do I see Alyssa? Do I notice Alyssa noticing me? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, you know what? I'll draw a card. Oh, first Sin. draw, first draw. Well, this, this is um, a little outside the rules. This is basically just a luck draw. Sin, red or black? Hmm. Black. You were correct. So, you do notice Alyssa noticing you. This masked figure somewhat unlimbering a bow from their shoulder. So, what I do at that moment, it's like one of those things where time seems to slow down a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. I turn and make sure to look as directly at Alyssa as possible. And I give just the slightest hint of a smirk as I do just long enough that she notices but before like there's any interaction i just keep on trucking in the same direction that i was going heading toward food and we'll say as you are about to start heading towards your food mm -hmm. that moment of time slowing down doesn't stop for you and you you know this feeling. This is the feeling of one of your precognitive moments happening in your waking hours. And in this moment, you see not a single plume of chimney smoke. You see a darker rising plume from the edge of town. And then time comes back to normal for you. And I don't need to tell you how soon that might come to pass, because I believe you've stipulated it yourself. Very. Yes. As you're working on the edge of town, you start to notice something. Something odd and something perhaps only you would pick up on as you are so uniquely attuned to these sorts of things. The slight glow of the beacon light 
is gone. I look to the farmer, have they noticed? They have not. This is something that more magically inclined or magically innate folks might notice because they would see the light sort of clinging to surfaces like an iridescence or wisping off of the edge of a building or an item, almost like mist in the midday. It's much easier to see in the I, evening. I turn, I turn to the farmer and they say, excuse me, sir. Uh, ye yes, Mr. Warden. What can we do for you? You must gather your community quickly, your friends, your family, gather wagons that you have, gather your children, and prepare your things to leave. As quickly as possible, please. Is there a particular skill you would like to use for, for a check? Um, uh, hmm... Politics. First draw? Politics. First draw? First draw of the evening. Yes, I would like to use my position to levy this person to follow my um, commands. Um, I would, I think this might be a good time to mention that for those of you who are watching at home, this tabletop game, rather than using dice to determine things, uses playing cards. Yes, indeed. And you'll also notice I just switched the music because Nins. Yes. Make your check. And as this check occurs, the moments you've taken to say these words, you hear a scream and you start to see smoke. So make your check. This is going to be about a... This will probably be at about a two difficulty, just because this is a farmer. They're not super difficult, but they might be a bit stubborn. Okay. Still here. Um, I pulled a seven of hearts. Seven of hearts. I pulled a two and a three, so you succeed. Hey. Uh, yes, this these music and sound effects are brought to you by Sirenscape as well. I forgot to mention at the beginning. I, I wish I could listen. Next time. Next time. But that said, Barry, as you say these words, they are almost immediately reinforced by the piercing shriek of a person off in the distance. And the farmer looks at you, and where they may have been prepared to argue... They now just nod and run. Luckily, the danger seems to be on the outside of town, sort of the opposite edge from where you are. So there is time. Barry, is there anything you'd like um, to do? Do I know what part? Do I know what plants are on that end of town? On that end of town would be um, so where you are is very much the um, I would call it the cherry orchard where these plants have sort of taken root in the wetlands because cherries do need a bit more water to survive that in that regard the other side would probably be the more flat rice paddy area okay um, I would like to make a luminance check ah I see and where are you attempting to teleport to or are you attempting I to teleport to teleport to um, well as close to these rice paddies as I can get which is two zones okay so your range is two zones we'll say because of the scale being a full town I'd say this is going to be not difficult because you're not doing it under fire or any particular pressure so I'll set this at a one I pulled a ten of clubs. I pulled the nine of clubs. So, without much issue, how is it your teleportation magic appears to you as you use it? Uh, so I touch the nearest plant, and almost as if I were withering, I disappear from that location, and I grow out of the plant in... Uh, the, the any plant um, in the area of my intended uh, of my intended objective 
I'll say um, you're a little bit disoriented at first because instead of winding up in what you anticipated to be sort of an open rice paddy field by a tree or whatnot, your line of sight is accidentally somewhat blocked because you've wound up in someone's back garden. <laughs> Uh, and you've actually appeared out of what would be a small wisteria tree. Purple blossoms all around you. But the smoke is thicker I pat here. It fondly. I pat it fondly and say, I will miss you. <laughs> and the smoke is thicker here. If, if you were perhaps a more humanoid figure who required air to breathe, it would sting your throat and your eyes. But in your instance, air to you is more something passive that you bring into yourself, we'll say. And you step out from around the building and we'll get back to you in just a moment. Danica, mm -hmm. as you were sketching, you have a pyromancy skill, do you not? I do. There is... We'll say a sense you can get when wildfires begin nearby. And you have a similar sort of warning bell go off in your head at this point. As you see a very large and sudden plume of smoke rise up from the edge of town and shrieks start to begin. You're used to living in a small town where fires can be dangerous. And like most folks in a small town, many of them. Oh no, we've lost, we have lost our Ninbins. Hold on folks, we've had a disconnection. Um, well, hopefully there will be a return. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, with that said, you know two things about this fire. One, that it is far too sudden to be natural. And two, that I have to go move all of our captures. <laughs> it's fine. Tactical difficulties. Welcome it's to the first stream. Pop. It's fine. Oh, no. I, I may or may not have the wrong <laughs> Oh, no. You may or may not have what? You went, to, the wrong button. you went to mute yourself, I am assuming? Uh, no, I went to open a new tab and I instead exited this one. <laughs> that is fair. But luckily for me, I got my shit figured out. Um, honestly, we were lucky we started so smoothly. Yeah. I'll say, I'll say that much. <laughs> Keep pushing your luck and we're going to have more during the rest of this stream. But that's it. Back to the mood. Um, so. You know two things about this fire. One, that it is too quick to be natural. And two, that it is far too hot to have been set by normal means. Even at this distance. Danica, what do you choose to do? I'm going to toss everything in my bags that I had out, and I'm going to book it in the direction of the fire. Okay, you absolutely can do that. And I assume you just sling a bag over your shoulder or whatnot? Yep, I just have like, oh, it's just a messenger bag, and I just sling it and I book it and run. Very well. As you approach, you can see the classic response to a small town fire. People are grabbing buckets. People are dipping them in the nearby wetlands and the ponds and the stream and things like that and going towards the fire Rue mm -hmm. your two minutes are up and you see and witness the things that have been going on as I've described them to others and as you've been crossing this market square just about to cross the bridge towards getting your food. You are in a flash past by someone you've been looking for. 
as Danica bolts past you. Um, what time of day is it? It is mid-afternoon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Danica. Is this is this happening before I book it, or is it like during, like right before? No, this is you are you are actively in the middle of booking. Yes, you are like mid sprint across the bridge of the market. So like just after you've slung the bag over your shoulder, and you have crossed the bridge as this voice calls out to you. I probably um, as I'm running, I like half trip because I'm so focused, and I just hear the echo of my name, and I just look over and almost stumble and fall on my face. Um, I would like to try to um, catch them if I can. Uh, you certainly may. I'm not going to make you uh, make a skill check for that because you're being helpful, so. Easy there. Um, we don't need you falling, not at this moment. That can happen later. Uh, thank, thank, yeah, th thank you. Why you always show up? at the most opportune times. Hi. Hey, um, so I feel like I don't need to explain this to you, but no. um, bad things are about to go down. So I guess that's where you were on your way to. But while we're on the way there, are there places that I could get a snack? I'm very hungry at the moment. <laughs> I just, I reach into my bag and I throw, um, I have a bag of like dried up fruit and that's like basically trail mix. And then I just keep running. Um, can I use, hey, where are you going? Smoke. Can you breathe smoke? No. Rainy, so, as all this is going on, you see these two figures somewhat like conversing at the foot of the bridge, one of whom you're somewhat familiar with, Danica. You've seen Danica around in doing Lee Morden's work. The other piques your memory. Um, Mr. DM, can limits be used to move other people or only me? Other people, should they be willing? Okay. Um, well, why don't we pick a safe distance from the fire to teleport to and maybe get an assessment of the situation? Why don't we pick the roof of this building over here? Which roof can we see from where we are that's, as, that's close to the fire so we can get a lay of the land from here? Oh, there is... You can pick a variety of buildings. You know, um, the roofs here don't go much higher than one story. So just about anything will get you a good view of that fire. Okay. Um, then I would, if Danica is willing, I would like to um, teleport us both to a roof. Danica is willing. Very well. Um, what does your teleportation look slash feel like? Do you think there is a brief puff of wind and then there is the appearance of sakura flowers because of course there are you know something actually no chamomile petals because of course there are of course in this wisp of chamomile and the slight breeze that feels like spring annika you blink and suddenly you are on top of a roof perhaps overlooking the flames from about three roofs away, you know, a, sa a safe distance. Rainy, mm -hmm. you watch a swirl of chamomile petals and wind, and the two figures who are conversing disappear. And you watch the crowd start running to put out the flames. Does this seem familiar to me? The like this, the fire? Ah. Yes, it does. Well, I'll not say it's a common tactic, but it's one that's been used before. 
I grab the nearest person and I just just grab him by the shoulder. Don't run towards the fire. Turn away. Just tell everybody to start packing to town. Back to the back to the plateau. We need to fall back. What? What do you mean? We need to put out the it's fire ta- before it takes out. That is a tactic they're trying to draw you to them. Who? Bane Horde. And at that word, you see their face go pale and they turn to run. Now, Rainy, where does Alyssa go? Um, to the nearest, like, other Gleam Warden, probably closer towards the beacon's base. I'm, I'm certain she also saw it fail. Oh, yeah. I'm heading towards the tower, towards where the Gleam Wardens would, would have congregated. Okay. And any Gleam Warden that I pass by, I just tell them to don't go towards the fire, tar- turn everyone around and to head towards the plateau. Okay. You actually managed to catch the person who is commanding the expedition, um, Zira Darkfang, who is the little sister of the current head of the Guardian Corps. And Zira mm-hmm. is a bit of an interesting uh, person, I'll say. They have black and white hair that's tied back currently. They're wearing standard breastplate carrying a spear. But what's most interesting about them to people is that they have two very cat-like eyes. And it's a little unnerving to some, but you're quite used to it at this point. And Zira immediately nods and just says, Right, got it. Um, wardens, let's start the evacuation process. Find as many wagons and as many pack animals as we can. Let's go. And they start peeling off. You said you were going towards where the beacon would be. Mm-hmm. Do you examine the beacon at all? Yes. Okay. The beacons themselves are lanterns. Mm-hmm. They are usually made of wrought iron or copper mm-hmm. or a combination of both. Occasionally they have glass, but not always. And always at their center, there is a piece of the former boreal crest which glows brightly like a diamond producing borealis light. Mm -hmm. The lanterns are inscribed with runes in order to make sure that that light can extend as far as possible. And various other lanterns can be used to extend their reach, should they be crafted. Mm -hmm. This lantern is missing its crystal. And as far as you know, there are no others in town. Getting back to the rest of you, Barry, you step out from around the corner of this garden and you hear a slight and a pop. And there's a slight flutter of chamomile flowers coming down from the roof. As our friends have appeared on the roof above you. And as you all... Hmm? I look up and I say, oh, familiar face. Oh, below, also a familiar face. What are you doing here? What else would I be doing here? I am ferrying mortals to their intended locations. <laughs> that's normally not where I find you, but I suppose that's also part of your job description. Um, Isn't fire bad for you? <laughs> In general, yes. Specifically, no. But I can't see myself burning right now, so that's not a cause for panic. Technically, fire's bad for everyone, so... Only after a certain amount. In any case, how do we... What do we do? We get people away. This is not a normal fire. This is an attack. As you say that, Barry, there are people who have crowded around to attempt to put out the flames. And you hear... A deep growl, almost like rolling fire, 
and the way it sucks wind out of a room. And you watch as the house that was on fire collapses into itself and standing silhouetted in the flames is perhaps an eight foot tall creature. One you don't necessarily recognize, but you know its type. From its shoulders are two large spikes and down its right arm is a variety of blackened obsidian-like crystal that ends in a hooked scythe-like blade instead of a hand. And in the cracks between these crystals and in cracks beneath its skin, you see a slight glow of flame as this appears to have once been, perhaps. A half fire giant. Someone who may have lived nearby or may have lived far away, but now only the horde remains of them. You also see these crystals come up over their face over the right side and completely cover the eye, giving them almost a ghastly half-statue-esque appearance. And as they exhale, heat moves off them in a wave. And then down the street you see more silhouettes. Rainy, let's get back to you for a moment. If I, if I could, before you do that, I think this Absolutely. would be a good time for me to yell down from the roof to the people putting out the fires. Um, I don't think you're equipped for this. You should leave. As they see this creature stand up, one of them basically says, Uh-huh, yeah, got that feeling, and starts <laughs> running. <laughs> You know, the toast of these townspeople, they they know when to go. They do know when to run. <laughs> All right, but back to me? Back to you, Rainy. Uh -huh. Even across town, you can hear this growl as the building collapses. And mm -hmm. while it's not a familiar growl to you, it's not a known creature that you would be familiar with or anything like that, you know it's started. Now, before the rest of the group gets in on the particular things they would like to be doing, what would you like to do? Well, let's see. We've got uh, a defunct beacon. Mm -hmm. We've got townsfolk running scared. Warden's trying to gather them up and get them in orderly. Don't. Alyssa's going to unsling her bow and she's going to head towards the sound of the growl. As you do, you hear almost whispered in your ear. That's my girl. Now, Aww. you all, <laughs> you all, we'll say, we'll bend time a little bit, just slightly, so that uh, Rainy, or Alyssa, I should say, arrives on the scene just as Rue yells to the townsfolk that they are unequipped to handle this scenario. Alyssa sees the silhouette of an eight-foot-tall monster crawling out of the smoldering embers of this house, and then sees a few creatures down the street start to join them. Black Do spires of crystal gleaming in the midday sun. Do I see Alyssa running toward this whole thing from where I'm standing? Yes, you would see Alyssa basically coming down the street, and Alyssa, you'd probably see them silhouetted on the building as well. Mm-hmm but I see them and also the secondary smaller creatures. 
Yes, they look, they're on all fours and they have spikes similarly coming off the shoulders, but sweeping back and what look like a pair of almost straightforward horns coming off their foreheads and black lower jaws with black and obsidian teeth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to drop to a knee and take aim at one of the smaller creatures. Okay. I thought I told everybody down here that y'all was supposed to, oh, you. Never mind, you can keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Rainy, as you take as Alyssa takes aim, she hears about a hundred foot shot. You think you can make it? I think I can. And with that, would you like to take your shot? I would like to take my shot. Now, we're not going to run a full combat today because we're still getting used to the act of making skill checks and things like that. So I'm going to go with the more loose cinematic route and just ask you all what you would like to do, and the creatures will respond in kind should they get the opportunity. Of and, course. And I say should they get the opportunity because there's a chance you all just mopped the floor with them. I don't know. We'll find out. This is fair. <laughs> I um, would... Do I get to roll a precision check because this is such a long shot? Yes. Okay. Then, so if, I can, if I can see Alyssa about to take the shot, I would like to assist. The way that I would like to assist is if I see her arrow pass me into the field of vision, I would like to use wind magic to amplify its force. Ah, uh -huh, that's... Interesting. All right. Um, yeah. It will definitely pass within your field of vision. No question. Like, she's she's firing from a position you can see and all that. So I'll say... I'll say if you spend one of your magic potential, your point, Rainy can add an additional card to her check. Mm-hmm. So run it by me because I'm looking for it. So with the fact that I have a level two in precision mm -hmm. and I'm making this a precision check. You play would two I draw cards. two cards? Okay, play two cards. So and I get a third. Person's help, yes. Okay. So I just draw from the top of my pile? Yep. Correct? Yep, All right. absolutely. Uh, mm. Face down? Nope. You just flip them. Okay. Okay. And then add together okay. your total. So I have an eight of hearts, or no, uh, five of hearts, eight of clubs, and a king of spades. Oh, you pulled a king. Interesting. So this is one of the new mechanics we're going to have to talk about already. Well, not really a new That's mechanic. It. That potential, though. <laughs> uh, that potential came in clutch. So there's two things that are about to happen. First off, you cascade because you played a face card. Cascades oh. are the system's critical hits. So since all face cards cascade, they're a bit heavy handed, but it's fine. Um, so now I need you to start adding cards from the top of the deck until you don't pull a face card. Uh, I only get one extra card. That's fine. That's a 10 of diamonds. Okay. So, here's where things get fun. What's your total? As in, just add the values of all the cards. The king counts as 10. Okay, so I've got... 8 plus 5 is 13. 20... 33 total. 33. With a defense of 2, this creature pulled a 10. I am telling you right now that you shall certainly one-shot this creature. Um, so the I way wish I could be like, I wish I could be cool and be like, well, if, if two creatures are lined up, well, could it be a through and through? Here's the thing. On a king, you also get a you also get a triumph, which is a perk. So you can choose an extra thing to happen with this shot. Now, normally you could choose things like getting status effects for free, because normally mm -hmm. those cost a resource, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you want it to be a through and through... Uh, Alyssa is aiming to get 
as much of these Bane Horde off the table as possible, at least the ones that she can help, like, that we can handle, just so the um, Exodus is not hampered and we don't lose any extra lives. Very well. I would say from your distance, you can't quite see if any creatures are hidden behind buildings. There's maybe between eight to ten of these total. Mm -hmm. This is. I just want to. I just want to take out with this one shot. I think just two, like two near next, right next to each other, from the way the smaller creatures are. Okay. In my vision. You take this shot, and with the help of an extra so, little gust of I wind. I want to do this, but because I want, I think this is going to be a cool cinematic thing. So when the arrow passes by, I just look at Danica and go, you know, just kind oh, of look I, at her and give a little smile, like I unfurl this fan and I just like wave it ever so slightly in the direction of this arrow. And I go, okay, watch this. It's going to be cool. So. <laughs> Oh, I should also note, I should also note, um, Alyssa's bow is almost her height as she it's takes a, this knee. It's a big old bow. It is. Oh, it is. It is big, like, it is thick. It is a monster hunter longbow. Absolutely. Um, that said, Alyssa, you take the shot and like, you know, it's a clean shot. Just in the back of your head, you, you know, you're going to hit the creature. And then you watch as impossibly the shot accelerates halfway through its flight and spins and the rotation has it fly straighter. And there's what looks like it used to be a dire wolf with these two spines coming off its shoulders and spines going down its back as well as its horns. The arrow punches through its open jaw and out its back at a slight angle but it has actually managed to angle up towards one of the creatures that are walking on two legs behind it. And it takes this creature at about the pelvis. And you see them spin and get knocked over. They don't get back up. They were far enough away that you don't get a description of the creature. I'll put it that way. That said, uh, that is two of the creatures down and the big boy is starting to move. Um, How far is the big one from me? Um, not very far. He's maybe, you know, 30 to 40 feet, depending on how okay, large so, the houses would be. So that is within my range. Can I, because I have Thurgy as a skill. Yes, absolutely. From this distance, could I attempt to blind it? Ah, absolutely. Momentarily. Absolutely. Uh, make your Thurgy check, and I'll make his defense check. Okay. All right, remind me again. That's... Um... Uh, if your theurgy is cards equal to your theurgy, theurgy level, oh, that's a difficult yeah, word to say. I think I, yeah, level two. Okay. So. So I hold. Uh, you could just put Sorry. them on the bottom of the deck or you can shuffle up to you. Okay. So I pulled a king of diamonds and a nine of spades. But these kings Cascade. are being very nice to you. So start adding cards until you don't pull a face card. And that's a four of diamonds right there. Okay. Okay. So that's a 23 total. <laughs> I also got a 23, but if it beats, it beats. So we're going to okay. just keep that rule. How, how do you prefer to blind this creature? Um... So I kind of just hold out my palm and it feels like an extension, like like light comes through my veins, lights up the veins in my hands, and it like collects into the veins of its eyes and just sparks. Ah, very nice. And so you actually hear not necessarily pain, but absolutely surprise as this bright flash of light happens. And then that flash of light is somewhat drained quickly into the darkened crystal around its face. It is absolutely blinded, but you definitely expected that flash to last just like a split second longer than it did. And you're curious, okay. you know these creatures absorb magic in a sense, mm -hmm. and you kind of just chalk it up to that, but it's still a very curious effect. Okay. 
Okay. It is flailing about wildly blinded. Um, we'll say it's blinded for another, say, two actions effectively. So equal to your skill level for now. Uh, Nins, what would you like to do? Um, I would like to drop this creature at least 30 feet into the ground using geomancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so you're not necessarily... I mean, would we consider this an attacker skill check? Wait, what is Nins doing? He is <laughs> dropping this boy. He, he into is pit the trapping ground. this creature. Um, Nins, are you attempting yes. to deal damage or simply impede? Impede. All right. In that case, I'll say this is just a skill check, more because you're targeting the ground beneath it than the creature directly. So, um, uh, opening a 30 foot pit for this creature, huh? That's going to be a little difficult at your current skill level. I'm going to have to set this at a three. You're, you're going to need a little bit of good luck. You're going to need a lot of good luck. Um, that's a 20 for me. I pulled a 27, unfortunately. However, you do get the option of banking a card out of your check, so... I will indeed use a potential to bank one of these. Um, because you failed, you don't have to spend the potential. It's just a free bank. Ah, great. Uh, you only spend the potential to bank a card if it's on a successful check. Ah, I see. That said, uh, you attempt to open this pit beneath it, and you get about... maybe a 10-foot divot that's starting so it'll still have to crawl its way up and out but unfortunately um your geomancy sort of gets interrupted by this creature's magic absorbing nature um as, as its feet touch down on the ground you're affecting you feel your magic almost siphoned up out of the ground you're attempting to affect that said the other creatures are moving in as well rue um, how many creatures are moving in? Um, after uh, Alyssa's quick work, there are still about six left. Okay, so there's one big creature that both Danica and Mr. Tree down here are trying to deal with, and then there are a bunch of smaller ones. Yes, um, they seem to be, you know, regular sized people with crystal growths, a couple of different animals. You see ones that may have once been direwolves. Um... That was one of the ones I took out. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's maybe about three of those left, and then three regular people-looking ones shambling into town. Okay. Um, then we're going to try um, aromancy um, for the nearest human-looking one. All right. Um... I don't know if I can... I don't know if, like, how, like aiming for things works when we're dealing with air magic, so that's a thing. Um, uh, we're but gonna I think say, you can only target one thing at a time. Um, yes. Currently, you can only target one thing at a time. Okay. However, you are welcome, if you have any magic potential left, you are welcome to spend it to increase your number of targets. I do not, because I spent that magic potential on the arrow earlier. Very well. So, uh, you want to target one of the human looking ones they aren't difficult targets to hit they're coming closer to you um, and I'll say they're definitely within range um, so feel free to make your skill check okay um, we drew a queen <laughs> add those cards <gasps> um, you may need to update so the uh, HP equations a little bit <laughs> We have an eight and a two. So queen eight and a two. Yep. Uh, so that's drew, a drew the drew the two up the cascade. So I think that's like a twenty. That's I a think twenty. Three starts with ten. Yeah. Uh, yes, I pulled an ace. So um, we'll say. I don't. How much are aces worth? Aces are one. Oh, okay. Like aces are super bad. Aces are the opposite of kings. Oh, um, I, aces are your uh, aces are um, it's not triumph. Chaos. It's tragedy. It's tragedy. Yeah. 
they are they are critical fails which means this creature um oh thank you for watching lemon twist i do hope you rest well um that said uh this creature gains a tragedy what tragedy would you like to befall this creature <laughs> What are my options? Um, I'll say uh, you can have it. You can strike it down and have its body trip up one of its compatriots, slowing them down. Or uh -huh. you could have um, you could actually carry some of the flame to these creatures and light a separate one ablaze. Could you choose? OK, so instead of using but instead of using fire, I would like to use um, lightning because aromancy. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Uh, so so it's almost like a kind of an arc lightning effect where I hit this one and like the lightning like bounces from them to the next creature nearest to them. I love it. I love it. So uh. we'll say um, you, this is all sort of happening simultaneously. So you've just finished sort of the motion to enhance the arrow and then you see what's going on and you just snap that fan shut and the bolt comes out the end of it. Um, yep. I would also say like right above my head, just because this fan is active, there is like a small like circle, like of storm clouds that are just above my head. No one knows where, like I don't, unless someone looks up, I guess they wouldn't notice because it's not like it's raining or anything. I oh, and besides that, the smoke would conceal them anyhow too. A little bit, yes. Uh, Danica might notice just because it would look like smoke, except it shapes almost like a wreath, and then there's little bits of lightning arcing off it when the bolt comes out. Mm -hmm. And this bolt lashes out in... Um, would you like this bolt to be mint green? No, we're gonna have it. We're gonna have it be that you know, like trying to do classic um, golden yellow. Lovely, lovely. So this golden yellow bolt arcs out and it's searching for the closest way to ground itself, naturally. The closest way to ground itself just happens to be a Bane Horde Walker. So it strikes this creature in the chest, arcs to the ground, and then you continue the bolt with a little jolt of magic. And the bolt pushes through the creature as its chest caves in and turns to ash and strikes outwards to another creature to its left. These look like you have a bit of an elevated vantage point. From your point of view, these look like they might have once been farmers from a similar nearby town, but they certainly uh -huh. are no longer. I just kind of look at Danica and those, these aren't fun times. They never are. That said, the big one's getting annoyed. He has been blinded. He has been dropped into a 10 foot pit. Uh, he's, he's very frustrated. He's also is... lost half his compatriots. <laughs> he's also lost half his compatriots, <laughs> yes. Um, one of them is not quite lost yet, but it is on fire, <laughs> which I mean, he's okay with. That is kind of his whole thing. Um, what? It's true. That's That said, you watch as this big one starts to sort of leverage itself up out of this pit. Um, Danica, I don't think we've had an action from you this cycle. No. So, okay, this, I think now I'm going to summon my weapon. And what's summoning your weapon look like, Danica? It's kind of that same, like, light coming through the veins in my arm because it feels like an extension of my arm. Like it gets heavier and warmer. And there's a bright like flash from the base of my palm and out comes this white gold rapier with these, um, the basket being this very intricate laid um, floral design. Lovely. And this blade just appears in a flash of light in your hand. Alyssa, you catch that flash of light and you figure it's something magical, but you don't quite catch what's going on. 
there, there's a lot of lights going off right now. Uh, we, we have a rave in Twin Creeks. Um, you know, there's lightning, there's gold lights, there's all these things happening, and it's wonderful. Um, but that said, uh, Danica, what would you like to do besides summoning your weapon? I'll say that's not going to take up your full ability yeah. here. That would and, be very really fun. Yeah, and would I be able to jump down, like, without hurting myself, obviously, or... Oh, yeah. Epic three-point landing. Go for it. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to jump off the building. Yeah. Yeah, you... It's a 10-foot drop, so, like, you jump, you tuck and roll. I'm not even going to make you worry about twisting your ankle or anything. You're fine. Cool. And I am going to kind of faint at one of them and from a distance kind of use my pyromancy and shoot, like, a flame, like, straight through it. Oh, nice. So the one you kind of faint at is one of the faster former dire wolves. Um, they've managed to accelerate into town a little bit quicker. There's, uh, I'd say, two of them left after Rainey's shot. And um, that said, one of them is snarling and they're so they sort of peel off and like come from around both sides of the larger one as he's sort of stepped into the middle of the road at this point. And so one of them is like gunning for you and at a distance, it thinks it has you until you faint and this jet of flame comes out the point of your blade. Feel free to make your skill check. Okay, so that's going to be two cards. So that's. Uh, I swear, I swear I shuffled these cards because that is the queen and king of clubs. Oh, no. <gasps> And, and a two of diamonds. Okay. So that's uh I'm going to say this is a bit of a stretch of the rules. Um, normally when you pair suits, if it matches the skill you're using, so if it was a mm -hmm. combat skill, you would gain one point of combat potential. I'm going to stretch this because I feel like that's a little bit restrictive in this instance. Since you used it in a combat way, take the potential. Okay. It kind of just makes sense. You're not really using it purely as a magic skill in this case. You are roasting a creature. Yeah. Um, that said, this creature uh, plays an 11. So against your, what, 22? 22, 22. yeah. Uh, it is still alive, but it is roasting. Um, it is on fire. And it is still trying to come at you. Like, you watch as some of the flames disappear into its black crystal, and then the rest just engulf it and remain. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be like, poor puppy. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> poor puppy. Uh, Rainy, I don't believe you've mm -hmm. had an action from Melissa this cycle. No. So you watch as lightning rains down from the heavens. You watch as fire jets out of a blade. Uh, and you watch as a very angry half fire giant is pulling itself from a pit. What would you like to do? There's also another dire wolf that is like one that Danica didn't target, circling around the big fire giant creature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'd like to do something that might be a little bit off. Sure. Um, Hit me. Can I make a spiritualism check? Interesting. What are you attempting to do? So. The running theory that Alyssa has with spirits is that they can potentially provide some support in terms of beacons. Alyssa is going to try and tap into any pseudo guardian spirits or spirits that have stuck around here to see if she can pull, pull them and convince them to ward off the bigger one just to buy us more time. Interesting. All right. Make your spiritualism check. I'm probably going to set this. I'll probably set this at a two because it's not difficult for you to reach out in this instance. But you might need a little bit of luck to see if anyone who responds is actually able to do anything. Okay. 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 Come on, Cascade. They're two. They're both spades. And I got a five. 
Okay, well, take your potential. And remember, um, in this instance, you will be able to bank a card because I got a 17, unfortunately. Okay, hold on. A question for a moment about potential. Do you get potential if you draw a card in the suit of the thing that you're trying to do? Two or more cards, usually. Um, okay. Right. I'm kind of flexing it a little bit because um, normally, for example, when uh, Danica did it, it would have had to be a combat skill to gain that potential. But because the skill was used in a combat way, I kind of flexed it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I might make that a hard rule. I might not. It just made sense at the moment, so I'm going with it. Um, and in this instance, I'm extending the same to Rainy as like, all right, you played two of the same suits, so take that suit's potential anyways, and we'll just see how okay. it goes. So does that mean I like draw that other card then? Um, no, what you do is you just mark it in your card bank if you want to bank it, and you can okay. use it later for various things. Also, a slight change um, I made to the rules is that you can spend banked cards at any point you would want to spend potential. Mm -hmm. In the same way. So you, you have mm -hmm. ways of sort of subverting the slower potential generation. If you feel the need. That's mm -hmm. it. Um, so you definitely managed to reach out and contact these spirits. The thing is, I pulled a tragedy on the difficulty for this check. So I'm going to treat this as though you would get a perk. I'll say the spirit you find is an older farmer who stuck around to educate others on best practices for laying out a rice paddy. And in this communicative moment, he says he can't do much to fight, but he could at least trip up some of the smaller ones. So he'll go and uh, engage one of the remaining more humanoid figures. He won't deal with the big one, but he is harrowing one of the humanoids. And you all would see sort of this, um, I would almost want to call it like a heat wave mixed with mist, start to gather around one of the humanoid figures. And it seems to be harming the figure or at least annoying the hell out of it. Now, at this point, the humanoids have started uh, getting closer and you all can see um, effectively the same idea with the larger one. These are or were once people and from their chest outwards is sort of this black covering of crystals that goes out and over the arms and slightly down to like the thighs. It would almost look like a breastplate with a little bit of extra armor if it didn't also reach up into their face in black veiny tendrils. Okay. They do seem weaker than the big guy. Um, and they also seem to have just less of the crystal on them as well. That's it. Um, uh, I believe, let's get back to Nins. Barry, unmute yourself. Um, I was just saying, oh my. Uh, with banked cards, um, do we treat them as part of the, um, part of the drawn cards for our skill? No, they or are. Do we add them, or are they additive? They are additive. So, normally you would play, say, you play your two card skill check, and then if you spend the potential to use a banked card, you can add that card to the check afterwards. Is this area still full of panicking people? Um, there are people who are in the nearby houses who are still having to exit. And so things have been a little bit slow in that regard. So there aren't as many. Um, I would say there's maybe about 10 to 15 people who are still just, you know, those silly ones who are trying to take things with them or people who had to gather children from inside the house before they could leave and things like that. Um, in that case, we're going to try this again. Uh, we're going to try and drop the big, the big half um, fire giant once more. 
All right. Uh, and I, I will... believe I can use a banked card here as well. Yes. So what you're going to do is there's two processes for using banked cards. You can either burn a banked card, which you treat it like potential, or to add it to your skill check, you spend one point of potential to do so. All right. I will spend another point of potential here. Well, All right. My card draws are not doing me any favors this evening. <laughs> but they're making really cool cinematic moments is for like cinematic entrances for all of us. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I have achieved a 22. <laughs> I achieved a 10. Uh, so. <laughs> what does it look like when you effectively cause this eight foot tall half giant to fall like Wily e. Coyote down a pit. Um, it is just a giant plume of dust as all that earth is displaced up into the air. So there is a secondary matching plume of what, at a distance, some might assume was smoke from an explosion, but what is in <laughs> fact dust being <laughs> hurled into the air by this eight foot tall beast dropping. And Danica and Alyssa and Barry, all of you on the ground actually feel the ground beneath your feet shake as he hits. <laughs> There's also a very angered yell and a heat wave goes off that you all just feel. It is going to take its one attempted thing Last time, uh, the one action I gave it was to at least attempt to get out of the 10-foot pit. This time around, it's also going to attempt to get out of a 30-foot pit. Uh, <laughs> Barry, I'm going to ask you to make a Geomancy skill check as my difficulty check for this. Okay. I need to shuffle these cards. Per the king's um, decree. Per the king's decree. Per the king's oh, decree. And, oh, wow. Did you cascade? I did. <laughs> I did too, and I so don't I think pulled, I cascaded as well as you. I, I pulled a queen, and then I pulled a nine, and they are both spades. Lovely. Take that bit of spades potential. Look at all of us gaining our social potential Oops. in... The knots. <laughs> the knots social. I kind of like that though, because it's like you just get it stored for later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's our backup. It's our back plate. Eventually we'll pull out that social potential. Yeah. So, uh, what did you get total? Uh that would be a nineteen. A nineteen. Um Yeah, even with my cascade I didn't do that well. Uh I got about a fourteen, so. I pulled a king and two twos. Two twos. Two twos. So two twos. this creature is very bad. You could hear it like railing and you do this funny little trick you learned where as it's trying to crawl out, you roll the dirt on the edge of the gap so that mm -hmm. everything it's trying to crawl up just falls. And it is getting very annoyed very quickly. Uh, um, this creature spent so much time trying to crawl out of pits it hasn't had time to attack anybody yet which is hilarious to me <laughs> but However, it's also buying us time it is buying you all time and you also all and you also all start to see more silhouettes on the horizon there are quite a few ways out but they'll be here soon so there is a few other creatures nearby I will say, I'm going to ask you all this question. What is your priority? Is your priority to defeat the creatures or is your priority to evacuate? Or is your priority to put out the fires? What would you like to do? Collectively. Right. 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 So I would, um, I would like to at least dispatch the ones that we have here immediately because they're right next to the town while the others get everyone else out of here. Okay. I will say, um, Barry, I think I know where you're going with this pitfall idea, considering that the creature did not make it out. Um, 
I would assume you're going to attempt to close the pit. Yep. Right. Would come on, fun. come on, Gara. Just, just go full sand <laughs> trap. I'm, I'm trying to wrap go, him go. In the eternal mother. I'm trying to wrap him in the wild mother's eternal embrace. <laughs> <laughs> go full sand coffin up in this business. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That said, uh, you will certainly be able to attempt that. Um, I will say there's about four more of these creatures left. Uh, one of them is a direwolf. The other direwolf is on fire and probably will sputter out at about Danica's feet um, because the next turn is going to wreck its face. So it will, Danica, it takes a giant flying leap at you and then basically hits the ground in front of you and does not get back up. <laughs> because it, I did the quick math in my head. You dealt enough damage to it and with the fire, any damage you dealt to it on the next turn would just ax it anyways. Um, I'll say Alyssa. There are three creatures you can target. You just watched the giant fall into a hole. There are two humanoids left and one wolf left. What would you like to do? I guess let's just take the shot again. Um, if that, after that, Alyssa's going to pack up her bow and she's going to just help whoever's left around. Okay. So, Alyssa, what would you like to target? I'm going to target one of the humanoids. Would you like to target the one that your spiritual buddy is taking care of? Yes. Okay. In that instance, I will say... I will give this creature a minus one penalty to its defense. So it is playing one less card because uh, you've managed to get a ghost on its ass, basically. So, take a check. Of course, I draw well, and then I keep on pulling this bullshit. Um, that's a six total, a two of clubs and a four of hearts. Oof. Uh... It played a 27 because it cascaded twice. Uh, so it got very lucky. Um, I was only playing one card for that check and the first card it played was a jack and the second one it played was a king. Mm-hmm. So that said, uh, you take this shot and it hits dead center of this thing's chest. It sticks. And you see the creature like reel back and freeze for a second and then come back to the standing position and just sort of roar at you from a distance. It doesn't seem wounded, but you have pissed it off. So like when? Maybe? Um, Nin's gone. Rini's gone. Danica, you haven't taken an action yet. Danica and Rue. Hi. So, um, which of you would like to go first? Being the last two, I'll leave this up to you. Okay, so, um, so the one just, the direwolf just falls dead in front of me. I'm just like, okay. Um, okay, so there's just the last direwolf and the two humanoids? Yeah. So I'm going to... Uh, try to do the same, do the blinding move on the dire wolf again. Great. All right, let me just shuffle these cards. All right, so that was a queen of hearts, three of diamonds, and then six of spades. So a, clubs, ni- clubs. a 19 total. Yeah. Um, all right. I played a, f- a four. I pulled two twos for its defense. So um, these twos are killing me tonight. But that said. Uh, but I mean, you'll run out of them eventually because you can only have four. <laughs> true. So that said, it is blinded. And you hear it somewhat yelp, but the yelp is like 
unnatural. It sounds like a sound you're fairly familiar with in grinding glass. Mm-mm. It is it is very uncomfortable to hear. I'll put it that way. But that said, um, it is blinded as hell. And it I'll say it can't even target a creature. It is disoriented. It is sort of thrashing about, trying to find something to bite. Um, and it is dangerously close to that pit, I'll say, as a result. Good to know. What would you like to do? Uh, where are these other two creatures? How far away are they from me? Uh, they are sort of... They've sort of been in step behind the direwolves. The direwolves were the first ones to make it. So they are, I would say, basically like a few feet away, but on either side of the pit at this point. That berry's opened up. So they're fairly close. I suppose I don't get to be serious this time. So more aromancy for everyone. Um... You call this not being serious? <laughs> you you smoldered a person to ash while well, a creature. Um, so I have drawn aromancy cards and I have a total of seven. Uh which one are you choosing to target? The one that has an arrow stuck in it or the one that's not been targeted yet? Well, probably the one with the arrow stuck in it, because I believe it would serve as a lightning rod. You're not wrong. Uh <laughs> you played a seven? I played three. There is an ace among that three. What would you like to happen to this poor creature? Hmm. Okay, so what are my options? Uh, I'll say your options with the lightning rod are stun it for a turn, so just lock up all its muscles. Or perhaps have mm. the bolts grounded out and in striking the ground cause enough force to get this creature to teeter closer to the pit. Possibly we'll on the option. edge. We'll go with option B. All right. So this creature is now teetering on yeah. the edge of the pit. Okay. Yeah. So Food. Um, I'll say next turn it's probably going to have to just use whatever action it has to not fall in the pit, but it is still very close. That said, um, the dire wolf is blinded and the last one is just going to sprint at Danica and it is going to attempt an attack. So Danica, if you would, wouldn't mind playing your defense, please. Okay. Oh goodness. Where's my defense? He's basically coming at you and going to attempt to you. It doesn't have claws or anything like that. Okay, so I pulled a ten of hearts and a ten of spades. That <laughs> definitely kicks my ass. So the way damage works here is that um, normally I would have given these creatures ranged abilities, but since we're being a little bit loose tonight, um, damage is an exchange. So whoever plays higher between defense and offense deals damage to whoever plays lower. That said, um, Danica played higher by seven points. So Danica, as this creature comes in with a punch, what does your counter strike look like? So I'm kind of just gonna like shift, pivot my weight and as they're swinging, kind of underneath the arm, jab through the ribs. All right. The most powerful move in anime, the sidestep. Um, yep. <laughs> so you sidestep this creature and you bring the rapier up underneath its ribs and you punch through the crystal easily. And you feel it. You feel this crystal crack like glass. And then you realize that what's on the surface of these people really lays what's underneath because you feel that cracking glass feeling all through them with the push of the rapier as though this crystal has just filled them. And then you pull and on releasing your rapier from this thing and it falls back, you see the crystal goes from this deep, almost ferrofluid black with a sheen 
to be much more of a slate gray and it starts to chip off, almost like it's dying without a source. And that creature falls. Sin, I do not need you trashing my dice rolls in Twitch chat. I can see this. You are, I mean, at the moment, you did not see that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Make a persuasion check, sir. Persuasion? I don't have persuasion. Well. Aha! Wrong game. That said, uh, so there are two of these creatures left. One of them is teetering on the edge of a pit. The other is blinded. Nins. Yeah. How would Barry? Um. How would Barry like to put the lid on this coffin? Um, he is going to gather all of that uplifted dust he threw up in the air, um, and turn it all into spikes if he can. Uh, Ooh, very JoJo's. Laying it back down into the ground whence it came. Very JoJo's. I love it. So, um, we'll say this is an attack, um... Because both of them are in disadvantaged positions, I'd say this would target both of them no problem. I'll, I'll right. be merciful this time. Merciful? To whom? Uh, I, I pulled a seven. Oh no. Well, I played two cards. One for each of them. Both of which were sevens. If it meets, it beats. Ah. And they can only take one hit before they drop, really. So. Don't mess with the Wild Mother, obviously. Thrala is. not fickle, but reliable, we'll say. That said, Barry, you coalesce the dirt that has rained into the air and maybe even a little bit of ash and timbers from the broken uh, home into these jagged stalactite-esque spikes that rain down over the area. You hear the giant cry out in pain as he's trying to crawl up from this pit. And both the direwolf and the humanoid figure wind up taking hits that push them into the pit on top of it, we'll say. Can't tell if they're alive or not. But that pit's getting mighty small for three creatures at this point. <laughs> it was so. only meant for one. It was only meant for one. Now, the creatures have been dealt with, but there are more on the horizon. I'm assuming you all will attempt to aid the evacuation. All right. So I'm going to um, clamber down from the roof. Um, actually, would I take, what is the potential that I would take damage if I just jumped off the roof to the ground? None. It's a 10 foot drop. You, okay. you, you can jump and roll and you're fine dramatic thing as like my robes are flailing and this fan is like out behind me I would jumping say, from the jumping from the roof and like landing as gracefully as possible next to Alyssa I would say the wind is kind to you and you don't even land particularly hard you just <laughs> on, it's like, like you the, took a step almost, a little almost like little on, the, on, the pedal. on the tiptoe of the gator then like crouching for impact and stuff very very anime about this very <laughs> anime <laughs> has to be at all times lovely and then I just look at Alyssa and go good shot so where are these people supposed to go plateau we're falling back north can I Beacon. see the plateau that she's talking about from here yes it's in the opposite direction so these creatures are effectively coming from the south and the plateau is 
to the north of you, you can see the walls of it. It's sort of nestled in a mountain range, and it's maybe two to three days away. Um, Bain Horner, slow. If, and we've effectively cut off one of their potential generals, so we need to book it and we need to make time. Right, well... I would imagine our two compatriots are going to catch up to us soon, and at some point we might need to discuss whether or not this town has some sort of barrier we can erect. The only... And uh, Alyssa just, like, waves off. Like, Alyssa just, like, gives a hand wave to whatever is left of the spirit that was Mm -hmm. distracting the one to just let them know it's okay. And she's going to turn over to... Rue and just shake her head. There, there's no hope for this town. We have to go now. Well, I think we all heard the lady. We have to go immediately. You're, you're Sooner basically, as possible. You're basically the only ones there. That's mostly addressed to Barry and Danica. <laughs> yeah, that's basically the intention there. <laughs> Can I see uh, the rice paddies from here? Yes, you're sort of on the edge of town. I'd say you're maybe like four houses from where the rice paddies start. Are any of the fields, have any of the fields had rice plants planted already? Yes, yes. Um, This is basically the season for planting. This is kind of that early spring moderate weather where the harvest doesn't really start, but it's definitely the start of that planting season, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, then in that case, I would like to use... Um, I would like to use my Luminance ability to just snatch a couple of plants. Absolutely. No. Oh. Yeah, you, you perfectly managed to snatch a few. No problem. Um, and then I will continue moving on with the rest of the group. Very well. Now, there was mention of barriers. I will point out you have a party member who can move the earth. Um, in that case, uh... Should you so choose. In that case, well, I need uh, something. I'll just wait till I'll wait till Barry arrives to the rest of the group and just ask them if if that's okay. Very well. Uh, I suppose I arrive. If you can do things like making pits and stuff, can you use, like, ground to make other things? Uh, yes, I do believe I can. Um, how about a wall? Because I feel like the... Um, whatever those things are that we were fighting have friends. How extensive would you like the wall to be? Um, if if you gave him probably a few, some. I'll, sorry, I'll I'll put a parameter on this. If you gave him two minutes, he could maybe block the largest roads with one wall each. I would say. This sort of work is brute force and doesn't take very long. Okay, so like maybe like this, like just making hand gestures, maybe like this and then like 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 that, but like big enough to keep eight foot tall creatures out or from climbing over it. I I don't know. And Danica, are you from here? Do you know what the roads here are like or what points it might be? That's to block off. I don't know the town that well, unfortunately. Um, we block their su- we block the southern route to force them to try to go east to west. But the way this town is laid out and the closeness to the plateau, with the fact that it's two to three days, we focus mostly on the southern and potentially western parameters. That's where they've mostly been sweeping in from. Can you do that, Barry? 
Yes, I could hinder them some with walls, indeed. Mary, I'll say we'll call this a geomancy skill check. And this will be more to see, like, you're going to get walls up. This will be more to affect how strong the walls are and how much time they buy you all. Okay. I'll set this at probably a three because it's not difficult work, but it is a lot of brute force magic. I say, I say this is a three because it's going to be mildly difficult, but my cards betray me. <laughs> um, well, I, I did happen to cast Cake. Not only did I not cascade, I pulled an ace, <laughs> so. Uh, we're, we're gonna say that when it comes to the statues at the top have like the last two Hokages of the town. Basically, the walls. Um, Basically. So actually, what I would like to do um, is I would like to layer these walls with with sigil cracks, ah. so that when they break, they release an explosion. I will absolutely allow that as part of me pulling that ace. Absolutely. These will. Um, oh dear lord. Okay, this is going to cause them quite a few problems. And I'll say that this is actually going to buy you all enough time to get everyone gathered and get them out of town. Just give me a second to switch over to this sound set. As we are coming out of this tragedy and the fall of Twin Creeks, you have all effectively evacuated close to 200 people. And you've managed to basically get them all to safety, I'll say. Mm -hmm. Need to get these wagon sound effects going. Um, DM, if I may. Yes, of course. Alyssa is going to hunt out Kira, uh, Zira? Zira, yes. Zira, uh, Zira. Alyssa is going to hunt out, uh, Zira in the midst of all this. Oh, all right, all right. We've got wagons set for those who can't walk. Those who can walk, I'm sorry, you'll have to walk as far as we can. We won't be able to stop until most likely midday tomorrow and we've put some distance between us and the town. We'll do our best to cycle everyone out so that people can rest and keep us moving. Yes, Alyssa, what? The beacon is missing its stone. That gives Zero some pause. And she says, All right. Bye-bye. All right. We'll have to deal with that when we get back to the plateau. Who was last in charge of it? Last patrol. Last patrol was Jackson. And, uh. Tevish, I believe. I'll speak with both of them when we reach the plateau, but for now, it's more pressing business. I know. That said. I see you've all managed to buy us some time. The walls were good work and good thinking. That wasn't mine. We'll have to thank our newcomer there. As I just like motion to the vaguest portion of where Rue is in this caravan. I would assume Barry is um, not stopping to smell the roses, but absolutely Barry. admiring the flowers along the road. Um, what you would see if this were a scene would be like a little chibi animation of myself, like waving from the background or like a little speech bubble with a chibi rendering of myself. Just from the back, just like, no, just like showing... very straight face with just like, like a peace sign, like, yo. <laughs> Pointing out where, where Rue is in the exact caravan is in this scene. Love it. And then there Love would be it. a little chibi version of myself, like, hauling a sack of, of um, rice plants. 
<laughs> stopping to smell a rose every now and then. And I would assume there's a chibi Danica coaxing Barry to move faster. Oh yeah, I, like 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 with that apologetic like the sweat bubble being like, I love him too, but please can we go? <laughs> I love this. Alyssa's uh, just going to give a nod to Zira and just, I'm going to hang by the sick wagon, make sure we don't lose anybody and do what I can. And then I am going to sort of literally fade into the shadows and dip away. Absolutely. Um, Zira... I would like to, like, just sh flexing my neck surgery just a little. Just a little. Zira just, like, shudders a little bit. None of you really notice it, but Batmaning oneself away is not something that happens often. Therefore, uh, Zira just sort of turns is like, huh, strange. And keeps back to managing the caravan. Um, you have 200 people and three days to go. Thankfully, um, as you're about halfway through that first day, you hear a series of pops from the south. <laughs> and you assume that that was the surprise Barry hid within those walls. Okay, a, a, a question and a query. You said a couple of days. During any of that time, do we sleep? Um, yes, you most certainly can and most certainly would. We probably sleep towards like the end of when we stop in the middle of that first day out, as Zira promised. Mm-hmm. No. Mm. Everyone except for Barry, who's just standing around. Like, if I'm okay, because there are things that happen when I am asleep. There is, which is why I've turned on the ominous music. Ah. Uh. Now, as you sleep, Rue, a familiar experience washes over you. Because moments ago you were awake, you drifted, you felt a slight passing of a breeze, and you wake once again, surrounded by woods. Paths not necessarily well trodden, the paths you're familiar with all the same. Is there a particular dream you would like to join? I think in order, I'm going to go and find uh, Alyssa, and then I'm going to go and find Danica. Very well. Alyssa, mm -hmm. what do you dream of this evening? I'm going to say with the appearance of this particular tactic of what happened with Twin Creek, Alyssa's dream finds her in the smoked out ruins of her hometown. After the attack, I would assume. Yes. Rue, this dream is something of a loop. It is an exaggerated or extended version of events that led to Alyssa finding her bow. In more than one sense of the word. Is there anything you would like to do, Rue? You did a really good job today, you know. Alyssa, you are startled by the appearance of Rue when you very much thought you have been reliving this moment in time. Mm -hmm. 
I would also like to note that, like, most of her dreams, especially the ones before her joining the Gleam Wardens, she is unmasked, and she has- and her hair is uncovered. Does she respond to Rudol? She stares for a moment and just looking down at the bow in her hands that she found before her other bow. I suppose I did. There's an odd sense of being aware that you are dreaming, but being unable to affect it. I've seen this person in my dream before. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I rise. I am certain Rue just sees me rise up because this is a replay of a memory. holding the clutch, holding the burnt bow, and just taking the steps towards the clearing. Very well. Maru, I think we will leave Alyssa's dream there for now. Because we are coming to the end of our time this evening, and I would like to get through Danica's dream as well. Danica, what do you dream of? Um, particularly, this usually only happens after days like this, but she's, um, in her dream, she's in the forge creating a stained glass window that is a memory of what happened today. And it's, um, all dark browns and reds, and it's essentially this fire giant, an image of this fire giant. Right, coming out of the pit or being falling into the pit would probably be more accurate. And she's just working diligently in this open flame and it's just everything else is dark around her though. Um, I walk into the scene with a small candle Interesting. Is this candle lit? Of course it is. <laughs> You're pretty cool in the real world. Uh, D Danica kind of is already like somewhat half aware that Rue's there and kind of just stands up and looks at him and just goes, thank you. You're not bad yourself. How are you doing? Uh, I've been better, but um, we got the people out. That makes me feel good. I'm happy. You know, I think I'd like to be like you when I grow up. Just kind of ran into the whole thing, ready to rescue everyone. With what seems to be very thought for you. It's an admirable trait. I mean, there were children. There were people I couldn't leave behind. Yeah, if you ever decide to become a warden, I think you'd be a good one. Thank you. And, um, I don't think I got to tell you this last time I saw you, but, um, I really like the chamomile. Mm 
It's one of my favorite flowers, probably because my dad used to grow them. You know, my mom's a doctor, and um, she did give us a lot of chamomile growing up. You know, my dad always told me that it would help me sleep. I never believed him. He was right every time. There's a very uh, potent kind of magic in flowers. You're not wrong about that. But I believe you were drawing a thing. And I hate to interrupt. But also, hopefully, the next few days for you are going to be peaceful. Um, you know, I'm not really good at farewells and things, but, you know, maybe I'll run into you again one day. I don't doubt it. I get that feeling, too. And we will call that the point where the dream fades. Give my sound effects a second to load here <laughs> as we get back to the wagon journey. Rue. As an observer. DM. As an observer amongst people's dreams, you have seen all manner of wild and wondrous things. Perhaps the most wondrous, and maybe the most off-putting, is never quite knowing where you're going to wake up. For the first time, and as long as you can remember, you wake up in the same place two days in a row. This time in the back of a wagon, in the shadow of a towering plateau, heading towards a small fort with what is very clearly a very busy elevator. And that's where we'll end this episode. As our heroes approach the shattered plateau, Gosh, that was a lot of fun. I really like this two hour time slot. I, I think two hours is just yes. the sweet spot right now. It is. Phoenix says, dude, this was quality. Nix, thank you so much. Um, thank you. I hope well, you loved it as much as we fun. have. Um, I wish y'all could have heard the sound effects this evening. I will see about making sure y'all can hear them for next time for sure. Is oh. like I have been over here doing some shenanigans. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, thank you to everyone who joined in chat. We had a uh, a pretty busy chat, and we've had quite a few people popping in. And I do hope you all enjoyed it. The show was brought to you uh, by Elder Scroll Gaming, aka me. Uh, it was also brought to you and produced by RPG Hour. Um, let me go pull up my comms things you can find the cast using this card link as well so that you can support all of our various projects um sin streams rainy does art streams ro does various uh ttrpg design things nins is generally just wonderful and you should go support him anyways <laughs> and uh, motivates me to exist although i think they hinted earlier at things that they might be posting on their account Oh. I do so. I do hope so. Nins, have I had your pronouns wrong this entire time? No, I'm he him. Okay, wonderful. No, I, I just, I just, I have a regular practice now for a, a lot of conditioning of just using they for everyone. Oh, I've uh. been getting into that practice as well. I just wanted to double check. Um, no, Phoenix, they were fairly quiet. I've been trying to make sure they wouldn't. The sound effects wouldn't overpower. Fast. Um, that said. Thank you to everyone who joined us. Uh, we were also produced by RPG Hour. RPG Hour will be uh, hosting the show on their YouTube channel. It will also be archived on mine in a few days. And beyond that, RPG Hour has also been kind enough to 
offered to turn this into an audio podcast. So hopefully transcripts will be available and we'll be getting the episodes out to you that way as well. Thank you for joining us, everyone. And we'll be back in two weeks. So this is a bi-weekly campaign. Once again, 4 to 6 p.m. on Sundays. And I know these two weeks are going to be killer for all of us. Just waiting to see what happens next. I Love know. You all. And thank you for joining me, my friends. Ah, oh, this is so much fun and it was so good. I loved it. But that said, say your goodbyes, say your good nights. We are off for the evening. Bye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Later. Thanks for watching.